Hello and welcome to Ancient Rome. I'm Greg and this is Concordia. Now, despite the name, this is not actually an adjective describing how the Eurofighter Typhoon is more Concordia than a supermarine Spitfire. Um, not sure what Concordia means, but anyway, we're in Ancient Rome and I'm going to show you how to play the game, why you would play the game, and why you might not want to play the game. So, let's get started. First of all, we have this big big board here that gets uh, laid out in the centre of the table and there are a number of cities marked on the board with A, B, C and D. In the two to four player game or two or four player game um, we use this side of the board and it's the three and five players on the other side. There are no D's on this side of the board so we're going to remove these. So on the back of these tokens are various goods for different cities and they're going to be randomly placed on the board. So we start with we can do A. So it says you sort of place them down then flip them all over, but you might as well just flip them as you go. That's a little tip for new players. Because you don't know what's on the other side, it's irrelevant if you see them as you place them. There's one spot for everyone. Then we do the Bs. Like so. Cover them all up nicely. And then the C's as well. And of course, if it's a three or five play game, you'll be doing the D's. Or you can even do the salt ones in the expansion of Salsa, which is Latin for salt. Now all the names on here are Latin. So C is always a K, it's a hard C. Do you remember, I, I think I first learned Latin in uh, about 1975 at high school. OST mustisenti, Cornelia est puella power, Flavia est puella magna. Flavia is a big girl, so that's fat shaming in um, Roman times. But don't do that. So once we've placed um, all the little uh, city locations, we then look at the um, provinces in the top left hand side of the board. So that's right up here. And for each province, we'd work out which is the most valuable set of goods. And we're going to add a token. Now, to know what's valuable, you can look at this little card here. Uh, and it actually shows the value in order. So it goes bricks, food, tools, wine, cloth. You can also look on your little storage area, which shows them in that order. So it doesn't really matter about the, um, the money amount at the moment. It's just about saying which order they are. So if we look at um, Venetia, Venice, Venetia, it's Venetia. Um, we have a, a food, a brick and a brick. So food is worth more than brick. So we stick a food up there. Uh, Transpadana, we have wine and tools. Wine is more valuable. So we get a wine. Liguria. Cloth is the most valuable. Emilia. We have... What do we have in Emilia? We have cloth and food. So it's cloth. Etruria is here. Um, it also gives you a little clue on here as to where they are on the board. So if you get confused, so that's food. The tokens we don't use here will be removed from the game. Uh, Corsica down here, so tools. Umbria, there's three of these here, so that's cloth again. Campania will be wine, because it's these two. Wine is more valuable than tools. And there's little Roman numerals here also that help you find them on the board, but it's pretty straightforward. Apulia is tools. Lucania, now there's two of those, that's wine. No bricks up here so far, which is quite common, because you'd have to have two bricks in the same province for that to happen. Uh, Sicilia, it's going to be wine again. So all these other tokens now just get chucked off the board. Don't need them. 
So that's basically the board set up. Each player will also place one land colonist and one sea colonist in Rome. And then we've got some cards up the top here that we sort out. So the card comes with five decks. Uh, there is one deck per player, essentially. But you'll see these, these have an I, I, I. So I'm setting up for a two-player game, so I will use both of these. The rules say to remove any cards that are above the number of players. I would say keep the cards that coincide with the number of players. Same thing. Uh, now, they get shuffled individually, but then they get placed on top. So the ones go on top of the twos. All right. And then we seed the board like so. Now, the aim of this game is to spread your empire, try and build a bit of a card engine that helps you um, get some synergies between the goods you're producing, the goods you need to sell, and the cards that you have in your hand. Um, there's very limited player interaction in this game. It's, it's what I would call a pure strategy game. Right. Now, each player also gets a little storage board. And if I look at the back there, it shows you what you get. So you'll get 15 houses. Player one will get five Sestertii. Player two will get six Sestertii, or one Sestertus more than the previous player. Um, then in your little storage area, you store two other land colonists, two other sea colonists, and then everyone gets two food, a cloth, a wine, a brick, and a tools. And then um, each one has their own deck, which is identical. So every player has the same deck. So this is what their player board will look like once it's set up. That's your starting position. And then as the blue player, they'll have these seven cards. And I'll explain those cards as we go through. But they, uh, they coincide with what the other players have. The only different cards will be the ones that are in the display up here, uh, which are the personality cards. Right, so I'm just going to remove this little board for the moment. I'm going to keep that off screen because you don't really need to see it. Because we've all got the same at the start anyway. Now, the scoring for this game is all done at the end of the game. So you'll see over here, just down there, there's two little scoring markers. Um, they don't move until the end of the game. There is an option in the rules to have an intermediate scoring to see how you're going, but basically you'll have no idea who's winning. Um, you might look at the board and think you've got it worked out by who's got the most cities, but the card play in this game is critical. Uh, we played a four player online, which you can uh, find on Twitch, um, and we thought Glenn was losing by miles and he won the game. But we all finished within like one or two points of each other. So it was very close. Um, but I'll give you my final thoughts on that after I show you how to play. What I will do though is I'm going to play um, one round um, of each card. And we'll go from there. Now, the player who's last in turn, in this case it's the red player because we're only having a two player game. They also get the Prefectus Magnus card. And what this does is it gives them a, basically doubles the bonus they get uh, when we do a province, um, a province thingamy, what's it called? Uh, what we do is you, you get a province bonus up here, but I'll, I'll explain that as that happens. Um, but it's, it's a one use only, and then you pass it anti-clockwise around the table to the other, other person. In this case with two players, it doesn't really matter. Um, and you'll see on the back, it says, Starts with the last player, lets them collect a double province bonus when using the prefect to let a province produce. Um, now, the, the game looks a bit wordy. There's a few cards, but it's actually a very simple game. So don't, don't panic about that yet. So I'm just going to get that off screen for the moment. Do you like my hand of God? You shall not pass. Anyway. Um, each of the cards also has a God on the base of them. So if I, again, if I take my blue player cards here, you'll see there's Mars, Saturn, Wester, Jupiter, Mercurius. Um, so the cards you collect during the game will be important to your final score, but again, I'll explain that um, a little bit later. For now, I just want to show you how each card plays and go from there. What usually happens at the start of the game is someone will make a quick break for 
um, a brick and maybe a food territory because they're, they're the cheapest. Um, as blue's going first, they're going to try and take, say, these two provinces here. I'll get my big fat head out of the way. These two provinces, Florentina and Cosa. Um, the number of movement points you have depend on how many colonists you have on the board. I have two colonists on the board as a blue player, so I get two movement points. Now I can do one point each, or I can move one of them two points. Your first move from Rome is always onto an adjacent line. So if I really want to get this spot here, I, I can only move one colonist, because that's one movement point. The next movement point is to jump over a city and land in between them. That's two movement points, so I can't move my C dude at all this turn. Now, I can actually put cities in these locations, and that's these little house, these little house doovers you've got here. You've got 15 of those. Now, the game ends when one player has uh, put down all 15 of their car, uh, houses, cities, or populated their 15 cities, or all of the cards are taken from up here and over here. So they've all been purchased and then the game will end, well, sorry. The person who ends the game doing one of those gets a bonus seven points, this special little card here. And as you see on the back, the player who purchased the last personality card or builds his 15th city ends the game and receives the Concordia, which is worth seven points. All other players now take their last turn in turn order from this player. So everyone else gets one more turn. So you've got to, you want to get your timing right. Probably sounds complicated right now, but stick with me. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, so I've moved my little land dude one, two places, and now he can try and buy these areas. Now, if we go back to our little play raid here, to build in a brick location costs one food plus one Cestertio. To build in a food location, costs one brick and a food and two Cestertio. So basically, any brick location only requires one food. Every other location requires at least one brick. Sorry, requires one brick. Um, and one of the resource of that particular location. Think of that as a theme, thematically, you're a, a tool maker or a smith who's going into that area. You're bringing some of your skills with you. So you need to actually have that there. So in this case, to build in the brick location here, it's going to cost me one food. So I'll bring my little player board back here. So from here, I would pay one food, and that's all I need to pay for that location. But of course, I started off with five sestertii. So I'm, I need to pay at least one of those, one sestertus, to go towards that. For the other location, I need to pay a brick and a food. So I've still got a food and a brick, and I can pay for this location. And that one costs me two. So in, all in all, I've paid three. So I take some change. I've now got two sestertii left. Um, also, you'll notice during the game, you have cards that allow you to put other colonists on the board. As you do, you free up room in your storage space. Um, anything you would earn that would um, spill over out of your storage area, you can't take. You just lose it. You miss out completely. So because of this um, great start I've made here, I'm now going to move these off again for the moment. Just so you can see things clearly. And I can now put one there and one there. Now, for the sake of the game, I'm not going to go through all the spending for the red player. I just want to show you what would happen. So the red player, let's say they want to do something a bit different. They want to do some sea, sea voyaging. And again, they've only got two moving points because they have two guys on the board. So we go one onto an adjacent line, and then maybe two down to here. Now, this is a completely different area, but they can do exactly what the blue player did. This one requires one food. This one requires a food and a brick. So the cost would be identical for that one, and then the red player could actually do that. So that's an opening move, but again, that requires the play of a card. 
and you'll see this card is the architect card. Move your colonists, then build cities build in cities adjacent to colonists. So that's how you use the architect card. Pretty simple, move and build. Now if you don't have enough coins, if you don't have enough resources, you can't do that. So that's the key thing. Card number one. Ah, what should we do now? All right, the blue player now wants to produce some goods. So they're going to use a prefect. Here's the prefect card. Turn over one active province tile to take the production bonus and then the province produces. So you can see I quite cleverly have two in the same province, Etruria, which is always a good option. So we look at Etruria up the top there and you can choose to um, do this for any location, but it's always best to do it in a location where you have a presence. You'll see Etruria has a food uh, token here. If I spin that food token over, I get a food. So I can add a little food to my board. Awesome, they say. Well done, Greg. But I now, each city in that province produces now, if Red had a city in there as well, they would also get the benefit of this, but now I produce another brick and another food. So there's another brick and another food to help me keep my resources pumping along. Okay. Now, there is another way to use this prefect card, and I'll quickly explain that now. Let's say a few turns later, we've produced in a few different locations to gain resources. You'll see on the back of these tokens, there's some coins. There'll either be one coin or two coins. One of the, whoever plays the prefect card next could choose to flip them all back to their other side and claim the amount of money. So in this case, they would get six coins and flip these back. So that's the prefect card. That's two of them. What's next? You, each player actually has two prefect cards at the start of the game. So you might do one to get the resources and use your second one to get coins a bit later. The whole thing about this game is the timing because you are, although there's no player interaction really, you're at the behest of doing something before the other players do it or suffering the consequences of them doing it first. Let's use the Mercator card now. So the Mercator card says, take three Sestertii and trade up to two types of goods. So, from the bank, you can grab three Sestertii, which is great. And then, trade up to two types of goods. So you could sell two types of goods to the bank just for more money, or you could sell one lot and then buy another lot. So this is another way of getting the resources you need. So in this case, I might say, I really want more bricks, so I'm going to sell this cloth for seven, as you can see here, for seven, and then buy two more bricks, and I basically get change because um, because of the uh, exchange difference. So there's my two other bricks. There can never be more than two types of goods in a transaction. So I couldn't, for example, say trade this one cloth for a food and a brick because now there's three different types of goods. So only ever two, buy, sell or exchange. Easy. So that's the Mercator card. Something I want to show before we go on to the other cards is the Architect card for, a, uh, for the other player now. So let's say the game's progressed a little bit and now the red player plays their Architect card. Excuse me while I do my housekeeping. There's the architect card. So the red player now wants to build maybe in these two locations. So again, the red player has two movement points, so they could go one, 
2. And now they want to build in Cosa and Illyria. So we know this one here will cost always a brick and a tool. This will cost a brick and a food. So if you look at our little player aid card, again, in a tool city, it's a brick and a tool and three coins. Pretty straightforward. Always Remember, always a brick and then the, the uh, resource of the location you're at. And then the costs are more expensive depending on the uh, value of the goods being produced there. So red does that. So they pay a brick, a tool and three coins and they can pop that one there. Now they want to build one here where blue already is. In this case, the coin cost doubles. Every other resource is the same. So this will cost one brick, one food, and instead of costing two coins, will cost four coins. And if there was two other players' houses there, it would cost six coins. So it's a multiplier. So you always want to try and get into locations before your opponents, if possible. All right, so so far we've looked at Prefect, Mercator, and the Architect. Now, we'll choose the Senator. Do we trust Senators? Probably not. This allows you to purchase up to two new personality cards and put them into your hand. So that's using the top section of the board here. Each card has a cost on it, but also they get more expensive from the right to the left, looking at the icons below. So you'll see a little red rectangle on each card. So this card costs, I'll bring it over for you. So this is another architect card, which is a bit more powerful than your standard architect card in some cases. Sometimes they have a little extra bonus or they allow you to take more coins. In this case, actually the architect card is the same, except that you'll be able to do more moving around and more building if you've got more cards in your hand. This card costs a tool to buy. Pretty straightforward. However, you also have to pay the costs below it. So this would cost a tool and nothing else. This would cost a food and any other resource. This costs a food, any other resource. This one costs a tool and a brick and a cloth. A tool and a cloth, wine, a cloth and any other resource, a food, a brick, and two cloth. So that's how you have to pay for those costs. So in this case, the blue player thinks the architect card is pretty good value for just one tool. So they will pay one tool and add that card straight into their hand. Now in this game, as you play a card, it goes into your own personal discard pile, and then you get to pick them up back later. But I'll explain when that happens. There's only two more card types. And again, first round you'll go, this is confusing. Second round you go, why was I confused? This is so easy. Here's the Diplomat card. Use an opponent's top face-up personality card in his discard pile. So if you've got multiple players around the table and they've got a card that you don't have, or you've already played yours, if theirs is still face-up in their discard pile and hasn't been covered by another card, you can say, oh, I'm going to use that ability now. So that's a great little catch-up mechanism if you've missed out on something that you really wanted to do. For example, in the personality cards up here, there's masons, smiths, farmers that do more tool production or brick production or food production that you don't, that, you know, there might only be one of those cards in the deck. So the only way you get to play it is by using the diplomat card. So that's how the diplomat card works. Now you're probably saying, well, how do I get my cards back? I'm glad you asked. We now have the Tribune card. Tribune card says, take back all your personality cards and gain one Sestertius for each card taken, in excess of three. Include the Tribune in this count. In addition, you can build one colonist in Rome for a food and a tool. So for new players, you would certainly say you want to play the Tribune card late in the round, and hopefully by then, you've either earned or still have a food and a tool because you get an automatic colonist build in Rome. That's the way you expand your um, 
your network. So in this case, if we had all the previous cards first here, I play the Tribune, I take back all these cards and count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Subtract three, I get five coins. Always take off three, and then what, so obviously you don't play your Tribune card when you've only got one or two cards out there, unless you're really desperate, because you'll get no cash back for it. So that's, that's challenging. So that's how the Tribune card works. So you'll do this, on your turn you'll take one action, you'll either, you'll, you'll play a card, and you, sorry, you always play a card and you follow that action. That will be colonising, prefecting up here, producing goods, etc. Um, or buying cards. So again we saw earlier that um, we can produce in a town by using the prefect card. So if we were now to produce, because I forgot that red built here, if we're now to produce in Etruria again, by flipping this token, whoever flips it will get a food, and then each player with a town here will get what the goods are that are produced. So red and blue would both get a food, and blue would get a brick. You can't have more than one house, uh, one city in each particular location. Now, essentially, that's all the rules, except for the scoring part. When you go to score, you'll carefully need to look at all the cards you've earned during the game. And this is where it can be tough. Um, because it's not as easy to know how you're going to end up. The scoring is easy, but it's like, oh, okay, I thought I was doing better than that, or, gee, I won. If we look at this here again now, this gives you a rough idea of what each card does. So the first thing you do at the end of the game is sort them into their gods. We have Minerva, Saturn, there's another Saturn, there's another Saturn. Mercurius, Jupiter, Jupiter, Wester, Jupiter, and Mars. We'll start with the Senator card. It's a Wester. So that says, basically for every 10 coins or goods to the value of 10 coins left in your storehouse at the end of the game, you'll get one victory point. So let's say I probably had about 15 points worth of stuff, so I'm going to get one victory point. That's Wester done. That's the only, each, each person only has one of those, and it's really just a way of making sure let's clean up what's on our boards and take them into account. Jupiter. I'll shift some of these so you can actually see what I'm doing. So I've got Jupiter here. So Jupiter says to give you a victory point for every non-brick city in the area. Now I think there's 11 provinces in here. So let's say I had... Oh no, there's got to be more than 11 because I've got 15. I don't know. But let's say I had... 10 cities built on the board at the end of the game. Uh, and four of them were brick. So that means I have six non-brick cities on the board. So I'll get six victory points for every Jupiter card. I have three Jupiter cards, so I get 18 points. Now I'm on 19. So again, it's very hard to know how you're going to score unless you're very good or you're taking some detailed notes. But again, you're not going to do that for all the other players, so you won't know how they're going. Saturn. All right. Saturn, you will get um, one victory point for every province you're in. So on this side of the board, we have three, six, nine, we have 11 provinces. So Saturn says, for every province you have a house in, you get a victory point. So let's say I've got a footing somewhere in five of those locations. So then we would say that's one victory point times five times three. So that's another 15 victory points. Which puts me on 34, which is a very low score, but that's okay. All right, what have we got now? Mercurius. So Mercurius gives you 
two victory points for every type of good that you can produce. So it's a maximum of 10 points because there's five different goods types in the game. So in this case, I've produced three of them, so I'd get six points. Mars. Mars, you get two victory points for every number of colonists you have on the board. So at some point during the game, I managed to get five colonists on the board, so that would be 10 victory points. And finally, Minerva. You'll find with the Minerva cards, they have specific goods showing on them. So this will say three victory points for every food city you have. I had three, so that's nine. And that's how you would score. So that, all that scoring is done at the very end of the game. So from that you'll see that there's not a lot of player interaction. You're trying to work out what your opponents might do, but really you've only got to follow your own plans or you get yourself in trouble. It's pure strategy. You don't know how you're going to track until the very end of the game. And like a lot of these good Euros, you've got a few options, but you're not sure which one's the right one at the right time. So it's trying to build up in the cities where you have, have cards that match, grab the right cards at the right time, have enough money to keep going, buy and sell goods. Um, there's no trading with your partners. Um, so for a pure strategy game, I really like it. Um, it's quite long, it's I'd say it's about 35 to 45 minutes per player. Um, we played a four player that went for about two and a half hours roughly to nearly three. Um, I still enjoyed it. Everyone had a great time. There was no interaction. There was no fighting. There was no bitching about stuff. Um, but if you don't like games where you don't know how you're going and you like games where you like to smash the person in front, this isn't for you. Um, it, it is quite thinky, but it's not hard. It's not a hard game to play. So I really like Concordia. Um, this one's from Rio Grande Games. Matt Gertz is the designer. Thumbs up from me, Matt. I really like it, um, and it plays a bit differently all the time, um, every time. There's um, a couple of expansions, I think, for it now, which adds you know, Salsa is the salt, which is basically a wild resource. You can use that for anything. And there's another map there, and they've done away with sort of this, um, this region-y look up here, and they're just distinct boxes that sort of point to places on the, um, on the board. So it's quite easy to go through. So look, I hope you enjoyed that. That's how you play it, and that's how, why you might play it. Um, and some of the little strategies around it. Um, I did, I suppose I did forget to mention the, again, the Prefectus Magnus card, so that when you actually flip one of these tokens to, to produce in a, in, a, in a province, instead of getting one of that wine, you would get two of that wine. And then you pass the card to the person to your right. That's it. That's Concordia. Sorry about the bad joke at the start of the game, but yeah, what are you going to do? Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.